All right, now we come to a little bit of controversy. These plants are at the moment outlawed, or at least in some states, the one on the right is outlawed. Other states, it's now legal. But opium poppy is illegal everywhere that I know of, at least as far as the federal government goes, and yet it is widely grown all over America. And I'd say a whole lot of people who grow it don't know that they're growing an illegal plant and do not know that that lovely flower in their, in their front yard or their backyard that they got from their grandmother and saved, and it just gives them so much joy and feeds the insects a whole lot, by the way, is actually the opium poppy in illegal. And as far as I can tell, there's no real enforcement of that. If you suddenly started harvesting the opium from it, I'm not going to tell you how, but if you do, it's very obvious that you are, and then I would bet that you would get busted. I'm not encouraging. I'm not even encouraging that you would use this plant for medicine right now, um, even though, as I will say in the next slide, it has many uses. But it's quite astoundingly a source of food and medicine, and indeed, like with any psychoactive plant, there are traditions of indigenous peoples that have used them for spiritual ritual for centuries. And that case here that I know of is some of the mountain tribes in Southeast Asia use the opium in sacred rituals. So, and once again, Stephen Howard Booner, which by the way, I keep mentioning him, and I want to get, take a moment, a little aside, to honor Stephen and his life. He just passed away early in December. And if you haven't checked out his books, Sacred and Healing Beers is where I read about the um, drug war, where they actually shut down the use of yarrow and bog rosemary and ground ivy as bittering agents in beers and as preservatives in beers because they not only did that, but they tended to cause great elation and libidinousness, <laughs> a desire to be romantic with your, your partner. And so the monks weren't very happy about all that jubilation and all that um, expression of sexuality. And so they encouraged the moving away from um, these other uh, beer additives and two hops, which tends to sedate you. And so that's the story of the drug war. It's fascinating reading. I recommend the healing, Sacred and Healing Beers, and I recommend everything Stephen Howard Booner has ever written. It's, he's is a remarkable researcher, a remarkable writer, and I've never had a book of his that I couldn't pick up, open, open it up anywhere, start reading, and not want to put it down. But he does cover the fact that with psychoactive plants in indigenous cultures, the way they're used and because they're part of the spirituality, rarely, if possibly never, are they a source of addiction. It's when we get to more separated from nature um, and more processing of the plants that people start to become addicted to these plants. In the, in the indigenous cultures, they're used possibly, probably even frequently, but they're used in ways that are not leading to addiction, and they're not altering people in ways that are taking them away from their from their from their world and from connection to the world. Um, that's the, that's the difference. So it's just something to reflect on. And then here, marijuana, which the climate's changing now. There's a whole lot of states that at least say it can be used for medicine, and a bunch even say, hey, it can be used for recreation. Um, there's a lot of tax revenue to be made from that. So the more they realize that, the more that's probably going to happen. But of course, also, marijuana and its virtually identical twin, but just the, one, the plant that has been selected for fiber rather than for THC, hemp, are sources of medicine. I mean, it's pretty, pretty famous now, the impact of medical marijuana on people with out-of-control seizures. It's, there's hardly anything that's better for it. And there's so many other ways. I mean, one that I first heard about was for easing nausea for people on chemotherapy, many, many medical uses. Um, and there are people that can spend hours telling you about all the ways that marijuana will save the planet. I mean, and to which I wanna say, we all we had slavery when marijuana was legal. So it's not, the, it's not the only solution to our problems, but it is a plant that is very valuable. Um, it provides food, fiber. We're thinking about, get, we have a, we're gonna be getting a license to grow hemp next year and we wanna use it for biomass as yet another plant that's very good at smothering out weeds and creating a lot of biomass. And then, of course, people use it for recreation and once again, spirituality. And most famous of that, let's go to the next slide because I'm kind of bleeding into that. The Rastafarians are the most famous group that use it for spirituality, but it's also used by other groups for spiritual purposes. 
And what's interesting, you know that the bread seed poppy, which is an opium poppy and is sold in several catalogs, um, used for culinary purposes, is specifically bred to not shatter. If you look at a poppy pod, you can see that it's this round pod, and there's not one bent over to show you, but on the top, there's this series of structures that when they open up and they blow in the wind, it just kind of spreads poppy seeds really quite nicely as they blow in the wind. It's kind of like a salt shaker for poppy seeds. But the, op the bread seed poppy has been bred to not open up so it doesn't shatter and those seeds stay there and they're high, they're particularly high quality. Any opium poppy seed can be used in culinary, for culinary purposes, but the bread seed actually is bigger and more, more perfect for culinary purposes. And, but yet fascinating to me is even before you eat those seeds, you can eat the leaves. And that actually was this, I said the, Cleome, the African Cleome known as African cabbage, was the one plant that made me think about doing this class or this um, presentation. But the other one was watching my friend walk it towards their door as I was leaving and they were getting ready to have lunch and bringing a big handful of opium poppy leaves. And I'm like, what are you gonna do with those? He said, I'm gonna eat them. And I was like, I was amazed. You actually eat opium poppy leaves? Yes. Where they're grown is a cash crop. And there's a lot of things to say about that, but they are grown as a cash crop, and we're not gonna get into that at all. But where they're grown as a cash crop, they are regularly eaten as a source of nutrition. And the leaves are eaten. I don't know that you'd wanna eat them by the time they go to seed. Most plants that we eat for greens aren't very good eating once they go to seed. But they are a source of greens for people who are growing them as a cash crop. Um, and then um, medical uses, the opium poppy, Common drugs that are available, you know, in the drugstore now, opiates are they're used for pain relief. You know, of course, there's been a, a whole lot of pain around some of those in recent years, but they are they. If we suddenly couldn't get to a, to couldn't get anything from a drugstore and somebody was in horrible pain, people would probably begin to relearn how to use the opium poppy for relief. I am not recommending that you self-medicate with this now. In fact, I'm recommending you not. But you be aware that if the time should come when you don't have other sources, you seek out the wisdom of others who may know more and learn how to use this, it would be literally a godsend because people in pain need to have that pain relieved. And people, if you had to, let's say, fix a broken leg or something, being able to, you know, first give somebody, you know, enough opium, tea or whatever so that they could handle that pain, that'll be a godsend. And of course, also, you know, diarrhea can kill you. Cholera is an example of that. But opium is used in a, in a form that, you know, has been made by, you know, drug companies, now pharmaceutical companies. But we could relearn, I'm sure, if we needed to, it's used to suppress diarrhea. And it's also used as a cough suppression, suppressant. And I'm not at all recommending we use that now. But knowing that they're there, should we no longer have access to our, you know, level of civilization we're at now where we can go in and buy medicines, these are the raw materials of medicines and they're you know, commonly growing in lots of people's flower gardens. Um, marijuana, not so much, you know, at least not in the states where it's illegal anyways. Uh, that status is changing rapidly um, and where it is legal, you might start to see it as a, as a landscape plant. If somebody is growing their two plants or whatever they're allowed to grow, they might actually have it mixed in with their landscape. The seeds of the, um, Marijuana or hemp are highly nutritious, and indeed, I regularly buy um, hemp seeds, organic hemp seeds, and add them to my food because I find that as I get older, I need to supplement my magnesium a little bit or I tend to get um, cramps. And so I don't want to take uh, you know, vitamins and minerals. I don't want to take pills. I want to eat my nutrition. I want to get my, nutri my nutritious nutrient needs through plants. And so I look forward to being able to grow hemp and harvest my own hemp seeds too. Right now I buy them and they're, they're quite delicious. I love them. Uh, it's also, of course, a source of fiber. And that, you know, there's a whole fascinating history about how it was used and encouraged to be grown as hemp during World War II and how the government in the 70s spent millions and millions of dollars trying to eradicate the ditchweed, which was everywhere because so much hemp was grown in the Midwest. And 
you know, they didn't succeed, of course. Once the weed is out, it's hard to eradicate. But they should have relaxed because you, <laughs> I'm sure it was nothing that anybody wanted to smoke. It was bread for rope, and that's what it was good for. You know? I think that's about it on those. I think they're powerful plants, and they, what, how legal they are is not poor, germane to this discussion. What's important to know is that they are present in our communities already. And if we suddenly don't have access to drugstores, we will figure out together how to make the medicine we need, and these will be important resources for that. And otherwise, I hope that we learn as a society to support the pe people who have dependence issues and not punish them. And hopefully we can have less of those problems in the future. We have a lot of them now, obviously. <laughs>